Okay, so we are talking about exponential functions in math 30-2. So, uh, top two, solving exponential equations. So, uh, we got to kind of harken back to our grade 10 and 20, uh, our 10 and 20 level courses in math, and we're going to um, just do a quick review of our exponent laws. We also looked at them when we did rational expressions, but it's nice to review. Now, in order to solve exponential equations, we need to use our exponent laws. So we have a number of exponent laws. Uh, product rule. So when multiplying powers with the same base, we add the exponents. The quotient rule. When dividing powers with the same base, we subtract the exponents. These two kind of go together, right? We also have the zero uh, power rule, and we've talked about that a little already. Anything to the power zero is equal to one, and that doesn't matter what it is. And we looked at that when we did polynomial expressions. So anything like uh, 3x squared y all to the power zero equals one, okay? So it doesn't matter what's in that bracket. If it's to the power of zero, it's going to be equal to one, okay? We also have some other uh, rules, the power of a power. So if we have a power brought up to another power, so you see that is in brackets, a to the m is in brackets, and it's brought to the power n, we multiply, okay? We multiply the exponents. Uh, power of a product, if we have two inside, then we have to distribute and apply the power of a power to both of those that are inside the brackets, all right? So we get something that looks like this. So each term in the product has to be raised to that power. And that goes hand in hand with power of a quotient. Again, we have to distribute the exponent on the outside to everything on the inside, okay? Uh, so these two kind of go together as well. And then we have our negative exponent rule. So if we have um, something to a negative exponent, it's the same as 1 over to that exponent in the positive. And we can write the reverse of this as well. So uh, 1 over a to the negative n. Sorry, let me make that a lot prettier. Negative n is equal to a to the positive n. And we don't like to have negative exponents, they're bad. Uh, so we tend to write with exponents in the positive form. So if, if you have it in, in its negative up top, you're going to want to move it to the bottom. Okay, so let's do some examples just to refresh our memory with these. If you want to try these first, uh, then pause and then come back and you can uh, see if you got them right. So the first one, we're going to use our product rule. 7 to the 3rd times 7 to the 2 is equal to 7 to the 5th. We add those exponents, right? It's 7 to the 3 plus 2, right? 7 to the 5th. Um, quotient rule, we're going to subtract here. So it's 7 to the 3 minus 2, which would be 7 to the 1. And us lazy, we lazy mathematicians generally don't draw the right, write the 1. Okay, you can, it's not wrong, but you don't have to. Here we're doing the quotient rule again as well. 7 to the 3 minus 3 equals 7 to the 0, which is going to equal 1. Okay, so this also uses the zero power rule. So let's write that down. Okay, here uh, we're going to use our quotient rule. 7 to the 2 minus 3, so it'll be 7 to the negative 1. But then we have to use our negative exponent rule. 7 to the negative 1 is equal to 1 over 7. Move it to the bottom. Uh, here we have the power rule, right? Power of a power. So we're going to multiply those two. It'll be 7 times 2, which is 7 to the 6th, okay? 
Hopefully that felt familiar, and if not, hopefully it helped clarify some things for you. All right. Now, an exponential equation can be solved either algebra... Ooh, uh, algebraically or graphically. If two exponential expressions, so we can do, use algebra or we can graph it to solve. Um, so here, when we say graphically, we mean using your calculator. And here, we're going to use the exponent rules. Okay, two exponential expressions written with the same base are equal. Their exponents are equal. For example, a to the m equals a to the n, and then m equals n, um, because they're equivalent, okay? And that works where a is greater than 0 or not equal to 1, and m and n are in the real numbers. So we do have some restrictions where that works, okay? This fact may assist us in solving exponential equations algebraically. So sometimes we want to come in and use algebra to solve. If two exponential expressions cannot be written with the same base, they can be solved graphically. Method one, graph the left-hand side in y1 and the right-hand side in y2. The x value of their intersection point is the solution to the equation, okay? Method two, move all terms to one side of the equation, enter the resulting equation into y1. The x-intercept of the graph is the solution to the equation. Dun, dun, dun. So we're going to solve all of the following equations and then ver verify the answers using substitution. So let's look at the first one. With this first one, um, if we solve it algebraically, we're going to find common bases. So we have to think about how are 36 and 6 related, okay? Well, 36 is equal to 6 squared. So we can substitute in 36, uh, 6 squared for 36. So if, instead of writing 36, we write 6 squared, and then bring it up to the power of x, is equal to 6 to 3x minus 4. Now, now we have to remember our power rule. Now we, have, we can get a common base. So this will be 6 to the, remember, power rule is going to multiply those. 2x is equal to 6 to the 3x minus 4. Now, because our bases are the same, right, 6 here and a 6 there, that means that our exponents have to be equal. So what that means is 2x has to be equal to 3x minus 4. Bum, bum, bum. Now we can just rearrange and solve that equation. So I'm going to move all my x's to one side and my non-x's to the other. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And I get uh, 2x minus 3x equals uh, negative 4. So basically all I did was I minus 3x here, minus 3x here. Here it goes away. And I have it on this side. Okay, then I'm going to get a negative x equals negative 4, so x is equal to 4. All righty, and that would be my solution. Now, uh, verify your answer using substitution, so let's do a verification. Bump, ba -dump. So we go back to the original equation. So if x equals 4, then 36 to the 4th is equal to 6 to the 3 times 4 minus 4. 36 to the 4 is equal to 6 to the 3 times 4 is 12 minus 4 is everybody got it? 12 minus 4 is 8. Now we just analyze both of those and figure out what they're equal to. So 30 so 36 to the 4 is 1679616 and 6 uh, to the eighth is the exact same number. So it works, okay? And sorry, I got a little bit into this workspace. Doo -doo -doo, let's draw a line so we know where it is. All righty, let's do another one. All righty. So here, we're gonna divide first. 
because we have an A value in there, right? We want to get that, get rid of it. it. It is not affected by the exponent, so we can divide that out. So we'll have 4 to the 2x is equal to 24 divided by 3 is equal to 8. Now we have to think, can I express 8 and 4 as exponents with the same base? Well, 4 equals 2 squared and 8 equals 2 cubed. So yes, I can. I can replace those with those. So I'm going to do that. <clears throat> 4 is 2 squared to the 2x, which is equal to 8, which is 2 cubed. Okay? Now remember power rule. I'm going to bring this, I'm going to multiply these two, and I get 2 to the 4x equals 2 to the 3. Uh, I have the same base, so that means, bump, bump, 4x equals 3. So solve for this, divide both sides by 4, x will equal to 3 fourths. And I can also write that as 0 0.75, which I might. Okay, now we're going to solve by verifying, right? So we're going to verify by taking the original equation and substituting in. So originally I had 3 times 4 to the 2x, so 2 times 0 0.75 is equal to 24. So 3, 4, 2 times 0 0.75 equals 1.5. 24. So the first thing I have to do, I have to run my bed mass. So I have to go 4 to the 1.5, which is 8. So I'm going to get 3 times 8 equals 24, and I'll get 24 equals 24. And that is correct. Okay. Alrighty. <clears throat> Let's do another one because practice makes perfect. Alrighty. So. We want to be able to write these as the same, uh, with the same base, okay? So uh, 9, uh, because I can't do anything else right now, right? Well, 9 equals 3 squared and 27 equals 3 cubed. So I can put in a 9, uh, for 9, 3 squared, but it's x, uh, to the x plus 3. And this is 1 over 3 cubed. Now you're saying, okay, but I got that fraction. But remember, I can use my negative exponent rule to move that to the top. So 3 squared x plus 3 is equal to 3 to the negative 3. So I just moved it up. Now I'm going to use my power rule. And I'm going to distribute, treat these like they're in a bracket. So this will be 3 to the 2x plus 6. So basically what I did is I distributed that 2 to both things in the bracket, um, is equal to 3 to the negative 3. Now I have the same bases, so I can rewrite that as uh, 2x plus 6 equals negative 3. And now I'm going to rearrange and solve. So I'm going to move that 6 over, so I'll get negative 3 minus 6, so 2x is equal to negative 9. Divide both sides by 2. X is equal to negative 9 divided by 2, which is negative 4.5. Now I want to check by verifying, so let's do that. We go into the original equation. 9 to the negative 4.5 plus 3 is equal to 1 over 27. Uh, so this is 9 to the negative 4.5 plus 3. So it's to the negative 1.5 equals 1 27th. Now this is a negative, right? So I can write this as 1 over 9 to the positive 1.5 equals 1 over 27th. So let's see what 9 to the 1.5 is. Wow, it's 27. So it's 1 over 27 is equal to 1 over 27. And that is the same. Okay? So just using a little algebra, we're just moving things around a little differently, okay? But you can do it. I have faith in you. Let's do some more. Well, one more, and then we're going to do some different examples, okay? So here we have uh, 
uh, 5 to the x plus 2 is equal to the square root of 125. So now 125 uh, is 5 times 5 times 5, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. So we have, we can write this as it's 125 equals 5 cubed. It does. So 5 to the x plus 2 is equal to square root of 5 cubed. Now, when something has a square root, it's the same as being to the 1 half. So this is the same as 5 to the x plus 2 on this side. And this would be 5 to the 3 divided by 2. Because the square root is like having it to the, the 1 half. Now I have my same bases. So I can make those exponents equal. x plus 2 equals 3 over 2, and I can rearrange and solve. So I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by 2 to get rid of it here. So I'll get 2x plus 4 equals 3. Then I'm going to move the 4 over, so 2x equals 3 minus 4. Uh, so 2x is equal to negative 1, negative 1, not negative 4. Crazy pants and divide both sides by 2, so x equals negative 0 0.5. Okay, do we verify that? Well, let's verify it. Okay, let's use a different color for that. So 5 to the uh, negative 0 0.5 plus 2 is equal to square root of 125. Okay, um, <clears throat> this is 5 to the 1.5, which is equal to square root 125. Let's now add, find the answer to both of those. 5 to the 1.5 is 11.1803 and a whole bunch of other numbers. Um, square root of 125, oh, it's exactly the same number, 11.1803, a whole bunch of other numbers. So it works. Okay. Yay. Now. Let's do some others. Now, we have some others that don't have common bases. So um, we're, you're going to have to use your graphing calculators for this. So what you're going to do uh, for this one is um, <clears throat> you're going to put the left-hand side in y1. So y1 is equal to 2 to the power of x plus 1. So this will be, this is your left-hand side, right? Okay. And then uh, y2 in your calculator, you're going to make equal to 5 to the x minus 1. And you're noticing for these, I'm putting that the exponents in brackets because you're going to have to do that when you put it in. Okay. You're going to graph those two, right? So this is step one. Step two, graph. Okay. Then you're going to go second, trace, and choose 5, which is your intersect. We've used that a lot, right? So when you do that, <clears throat> and I'm going to just quickly do that for mine. So 2 to the exponent x plus 1 for my y1, and then 5 to the exponent x minus 1 check my windows. I'm going to go from 0, or sorry, I'm going to go from negative 10 to 10 for both of them, just because I don't know where it's going to be. I'll adjust if I need to, and then I'm going to graph. I've got one, oh, I got two lines. Hmm. I think I need to extend my y up higher just because. So I'm going to make my y equal to 20. And I'll graph those at my first curve. So on my curve, it's looking like this. So hopefully yours does as well. My first curve goes like that. My second curve goes like that. And they meet right about there. So then I go y, or sorry, I go second function, trace. 5 is intersect. I go first curve, yes. Second curve, yes, and guess. 
and it gives me for my intersection um, x equals 2.5 and then there's one two da, 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 a bunch of other things so what that's telling me is this is at 2.512 and it tells me my y value which I don't need to know is 11.415 a bunch of other things but it's this is the key one that I want to know I want to know the x value because the that's the two variables that I, that's the variable I'm looking for the solution okay so we do the same thing for the next one uh, y1 will be 3x minus 5 and y2 will be 2 5 x over 4 and I'm going to put brackets there as well just to make sure in fact you might want to put this in brackets okay to make sure that it goes the right way uh, so that's step one so let's do that <clears throat> so clear your previous so you're going to have 3 to the x minus 5 and then for your y2 you're going to have 2 times uh, put a bracket then another bracket for 5 and then and close your bracket and then 2 the exponent, put in a bracket, x divided by 4, close your bracket, close your bracket. should have enough brackets if you do that. We're going to graph them, see what they look like. Okay, now looking at this, they do not intersect on my screen, so I'm going to make my window even higher i'm going to make my y max up to 50 and i'm going to make my y minute minimum zero because y is never going to be zero right so let's graph that see if that did the trick so i have here on my graph i get a curve that goes ooh, almost like a box eh? and then i have another one that comes in and they're not quite meeting, so I'm going to actually extend my, my y max again and make it 70, see what happens. Because I want to have that intersection point, right? Because I'm looking for this. And we're going to see in a minute what that actually is. Okay, so second function, trace. Intersect is choice five. First curve, enter. Second curve, enter. Third curve, or guess, sorry. And then for the guess... It is giving me, ooh, see, yeah, this is way up at um, 71.38. And my x value is 8.885 dot, dot, dot. So I would say for my, an my analysis that I can round that to 8.9, okay? So again second function trace and it's five which is intersect it's just enter 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 after that okay all right some nice graphing solutions gotta like that it's always wonderful to have technology when algebra doesn't work and the thing is okay here's the thing say you say oh miss i get the graphing i don't get the algebra i really have a hard time Here's the thing. The graphing will work for the algebra ones too. So if you can't figure it out using algebra, use your graphing. It's going to work. And no one says you can't. Okay? So solving an equation in context using more than one method. Okay? So the population of a specific bacteria growing in a Petri dish is modeled by the function PT is equal to 12,000 times 3 to the t over 4, where pt represents the number of bacteria and t represents the time and hours after the initial count. Okay, determine the value of t when pt equals 34, or th sorry, 324,000 algebraically by rewriting the equation with the same base. Okay, so we have this is the equation right so we want when pt equals 34000 
equal to 12, 0, 0, 0, 3, t to over 4. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by 12,000 because that's going to simplify things a lot. Right now, if you look at that 324,000, you're saying, I don't know how to make that an exponent of 3. Whoa, that number's huge. You don't have to. You're going to divide it by 12,000. So 324,000 000, divided by 12,000, and you get, dun, 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 this should look magical. 24 is equal to 3 to the t over 4. Okay? Now 27 is equal to 3 cubed, right? So we're going to put in that for 27. 3 cubed equals 3 to the t over 4. Now, because the bases are the same, we can make 3 equal t over 4 and rearrange to solve. So we will just multiply both sides by 4. It'll cancel out on that side. And we will get t is equal to 12. All righty. So what does that mean? Uh, it means it takes 12 hours, right, because it's time in hours, for there to be 324,000 bacteria in the Petri dish. Okay. Determine the value of T when PT equals 14,000 graphically. Now there might be a reason for that because it might be hard to get them with the same base. So you might have to be able to use the same method. So basically it's 14,000 is equal to 12,000 times three to the T over four. So step one, Y equals 14,000, Y one. Y two will equal 12,000 times three t to the 4. Um, make sure, I'm just going to book a note, look at the size of that, windows, so your y windows has to be really, really, really big, okay? So, um, but, let's think about that. Right away, I can divide both sides by 1,000, right? And it's still going to be equivalent. So let's do that and only put in those values because your windows otherwise are going to suck, right? So we're going to put in 14 and we're going to put in 12 times 3 to t to the 4. Make sure that you have brackets around that so that you can make it work right. So when we graph that, let's put those in. I'm clearing my old y's. So we'll have 14 for my y, then 12 bracket 3 to the bracket x divided by 4, close bracket, close bracket. I'm going to change my windows and graph. So the first thing I'm seeing when I graph it, first thing that goes on there is that y is equal to 14. And then I get a second line that comes in here, and I want to know this point. So I graph it, second trace, 5, which is intersection. And then it's basically enter, enter, enter. Okay, second, trace, five, enter, enter, enter. And what do I get? Bump, bump, bump. Well, we know the intersection is going to be at y is equal to 14, right? And for the x value, I get 0 0.5612 dot, dot, dot. So from that, x is equal to 0 0.56 hours. I'm not sure if it has, it says to the nearest hundredth. So that's all you need. So you can use both methods. If you cannot get the same base to do it algebraically, you can use it graphically. If you only like to do graphically, do it graphically. Nothing wrong with that, okay? 
Alrighty, calculating the time to pay off a loan. All right, some of you may be doing this because you might be thinking of buying cars and that sort of thing or that such. Jessica borrowed 7500 from a bank to buy new equipment for her band. Jessica's a singer. Look at her singing. The bank is charging an interest rate of 3.6% per annum compounded monthly. Jessica's monthly loan payment is 4000 or $400. <laughs> Determine how long it will take Jessica to pay off the loan. The loan manager gave Jessica the following equation so she could determine how long it would take her to pay off the loan. So it's 1.003 to the negative n is equal to 0.94184911271. And n represents the number of months. Okay? So we have to uh, solve that. Uh, so what are we going to do looking at this? Um, so let's, let's do, I'm going to do the graphing method because I can't think of the same bases there. So putting in, using the graph, this is going to be my y1 and this will be my y2. So in my y1, I've got bracket 1.003 to the x, or to the negative x, right? That's my n. And then the other one is going to be 0.9. And for this one, we're going to put all those digits in because it matters. 8491271. And we're going to graph that. So our first one is pretty tiny I'm actually going to change my window I'm going to go from 0 to 30 and for my y I don't think it's going to get much bigger than 0 0.941 blah 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 and that's where they have to intersect so I'm just going to put it to 4 and graph so when I graph them I have my, this is like this. Wow. They both look like straight lines. Well, let's see, second function trace, intersect. First curve, enter, second curve, enter, enter. It still works. <laughs> so even though it graph, because all I could see was uh, a line going like, this and then another one like that like but they're just really close together right they intersect at x equals 20 and where y is equal to 0 0.9418491271 okay um i think if i change my window more like that would tell me better but anyways, I get y equals 20. It, the intersection works. How much interest will Jessica pay on the loan? Well, um, it says that she pays 3.6% um, <clears throat> annually compounded monthly, right? So, uh, and she's paying $400 times 20 months. That's what we need to know. When we multiply that, we get $8,000, right? So originally, she took $7,500. So we subtract, and that means she pays $500, okay? So the interest paid is the amount, total amount paid minus the amount borrowed. So she paid $500 interest, um, on that loan um, that she borrowed for 20 months. Some may see them as a good deal. It depends on what the interest rate is, 3.6. Right now, that's not a good rate. Right now, interest rates are really low, right? Okay. Jessica's thinking about adding a light and sound package to a purchase. That would add 3,000 to her loan. How much is she borrowing now? Well, she borrowed 
seven five plus three thousand so ten five right okay the loan manager gave Jessica the following equation so she could determine how long it would take to pay off her loan and again represents the number of months how much longer will this take so again this is our y2 and this is our y1 put those in your calculator don't worry about how yucky the graph looks because it does look yucky and the second number is different right point nine one nine five four six eight eight zero five we graph those two and we're going to do our second trace five enter 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 there we go okay my graph second trace five enter 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 and i get x is equal to 28 and it says how much longer so it'll be eight months longer because originally it was 20. okay how much more interest will jessica have to pay if she buys the lighting and sound package well 400 times 28 uh equals 11 11 20 right so for her interest well, what's the difference here? She borrowed 1050. So uh, her interest was 700, right? It says how much more interest? So that is $200 more interest. Okay. It's nice to have that calcul calculated function, and it really shows you technology is very, very useful for us. Okay. Need to know. And an, ex, uh, an exponential function or equation can be solved either algebraically or graphically. If two exponential functions written in, with the same base are equal, their exponents are equal. For example, a to the m equals a to the n, uh, then m equals n as long as a is greater than 0, not equal to 1, and m and n are real numbers. Uh, so to solve that algebraically, we write both sides of the equation as powers with the same base if possible, and then we set the exponents equal to each other and solve that resulting equation. Now, we can also solve graphically. There's two methods, left-hand side and the right-hand side. Find the intersection point, um, or you can move all the terms to one side of the equation graph in Y1. The x-intercept of the resulting graph is the solution. Now, we didn't really do that method, but you could do that one, and just instead of finding intersection, you're finding the zeros, right? Um, and you know how to do that. But either one will work. Intersection, in some ways, might be a little easier, you know, especially with some of these weird graphs. As long as they